Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin and welcome back for my week 24 plan with me. In today's video I'm going to be setting up for the 8th through to the 14th of June. But before we get into that, as per usual, we're just going to have a look at how this week was going. So as you'll remember from my last weekly plan with me, the layout that I had for this week was a space for each day of the week, a space for a task list here, and then this decorative panel on the side. I've quite liked this layout, I like the amount of space it gives me for each day, but to be honest my use of my journal this week has been kind of varied, so I probably haven't made as much use of it as I could. Flipping over though, you can see that I've already penciled out what I'm going to be doing this week, and just as a reminder, any of the equipment I use is going to be linked in the description box below. In terms of timing, today's layout took about 33 minutes. That's from the first putting down of the washi tape to the final touch as a pen. If you include the time for penciling in, that's probably an extra about 5 minutes, so maybe about 38 minutes total. For the questions we had on last week's video, our first one comes from Kelly who asked, what has been your favourite theme so far? This one's kind of tricky because every time I set up a new month in my journal, I get really excited about the theme that I'm currently using. So at the moment I'm really super loving my moons and mountains theme. But some of my past favourites, the first ones that come to mind, would have to be the Dreamcatchers theme that I did back in March, and probably the Under the Sea theme that I did in February last year. I did also really love my Disney theme from last May, and my Autumn theme from this May. Our next question comes from Katie who asked, How many bullet journals do you use at once? Do you have one for long term goals? i.e. reading logs, etc. So I've got two, I've got the one you see on screen at the moment, which I call my day-to-day -day bullet journal, and then I've also got my long-term collections bullet journal. That's the one for any collection that would last longer than the life of one journal. So for instance, pen swatches, my wish list, my bucket list, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Our next question comes from Sombra Honey, who asked, have you ever done a snail monthly theme, since snails are your favourite animal? I haven't, and this probably comes down to colour, since that snails are typically browns and kind of grey colours, and that's not really usually my preferred colour palette. I think snails are really cute, but I don't know how well I'd be able to do a theme that kind of stayed true to what I like about snails, but also was something I'd prefer for my journal. Does that kind of make sense? I don't know, maybe I need to think about it. Our next question comes from... I'm not sure if it's Talia or Taylor. Please let me know. But they asked, do you wear fake nails? So the only time I've ever worn fake nails was for Rachel's wedding last year. And considering how much pain there was when one of them snapped in half and took my real nail with it, I don't think I'll be wearing fake nails again anytime soon. The next question comes from Nikki who asked, where did you get the inspiration for the decoration? So for all of the mountain decorations that I've been doing as part of this month's layout, most of the inspiration for those has come from geometric mountain tattoos. In the description box below there's also a link to my Pinterest board for those, which has all of the images that I used for inspiration, plus some more. Our next question comes from Zana, who asked, How do you get the Signo White gel pen to actually come off as white? Anytime I put it over a black brush pen, it just dries into a dark grey, even when going over it multiple times. So one of the things I'd say is that I like to make sure that the base colour that I'm using has completely dried before I try and put the white gel pen over the top, otherwise there's much more of a chance that the colours will kind of blend together and I won't get a really good colour white. I've found that pressing down less hard also helps because it seems to actually put down more ink, which means that that white colour will end up a lot more opaque a lot more white than if I pressed a bit harder. Also you're less likely to get streaks that way, which is good. I've also found that if I do put it down and it isn't quite as white as I'd like, if I let that dry completely and then go over it with the white again, I'm more likely to get a brighter white. Those are just some tips and of course it really depends on what you're trying to write over, but those few things have helped me. Our next question comes from Anita who asked, what is your most recent stationary acquisition? And do you tend to use old favourites a lot or do you like using new things? So I'll answer the last part first. I think I probably do just like using my old favourites more than new things. Mostly because I can just get the desired outcomes with the things I already have. 
So for instance, my Tombos, which I've had pretty much since I started bullet journaling, and the Pit Artist Pens, which I have been using for a few years now. My most recent acquisition hasn't quite arrived yet, it's still in the mail, but I have recently purchased one of the cleaning tracker stencils from Erin Flodo Designs. I'm really excited to get that so that I can do some layouts with it. Other than that, I think my most recent addition would probably be my circle stencil from Statler. And I love it. <laughs> I love that stencil so much. It makes drawing circles so quick and easy, and I really appreciate that it has a huge variety of different sizes of circle. Certainly a staple supply for me. A similar question comes from The Artsy Life, who asked, Aside from the metallic watercolours, what are other paints or supplies you like to use that aren't traditionally used in bullet journals? So I don't have a lot, but I would say that I do like using my Distress Oxide inks every now and again. They were something that I used back in February last year for my Under the Sea theme. Other than my metallic watercolours, I don't use a lot of other paints in my journal. Mostly just because I don't really have the techniques down to do them justice. Our next question comes from Litsa, and thank you for letting me know how to say your name. And they asked, which video would I have to go back to for a tutorial for your style of running task list? So I assume you might be talking about the type of task list that I'm using today, where I have the initials for each day of the week on one side, and then the tasks written in the column next to it. It's not a full-blown tutorial, but in the video that I have linked in the description box, in that one I do explain how it works. If that one wasn't sufficient though, please do let me know if there are still aspects that don't really make sense. Our next question comes from Chasing Comets, who asked, What's your favourite part about bullet journaling? There are two parts really. One, I like to use bullet journaling as my creative outlet, so it lets me do those kind of creative things that I don't really do anywhere else. And two, it just keeps me organised. Without my bullet journal, and I've certainly noticed this when I don't use it, I get really scatterbrained and totally drop the ball on a bunch of things that I'm supposed to be doing. I honestly don't know how I got things done before I started bullet journaling. <laughs> So the organisation and the creativity elements are my favourite things. Our question from Courtney was, what is the first thing you look forward to when your whole country opens back up? So at level 2 it really feels like we're pretty much open already. I think one of the main things will be not having to sanitise my hands every time I go into a store. I really, really hate alcohol-based hand sanitizers. They make my skin feel like crap. <laughs> so not having to use those, I am very much looking forward to. Jennifer's question is a big one, and she asked, what would your dream life look like? Dream job, dream home, dream lifestyle, and dream city. Focusing on those four in particular, so I really like living in Wellington, so I would like to continue living in Wellington. I appreciate the smallness of our city and how it doesn't really take very long to get places. In terms of dream job, I think that one day I would like to sell my own planner. I think that would be awesome. I really enjoy doing my YouTubing, so if at one point I was able to make a career out of that, that would be awesome. Dream home, well mainly I just like to have a house where I have my own office. It would also be nice to have a garage, so birds didn't shit on our car as often. And preferably a house with less stories. Because we have three levels in our house, getting a consistent temperature across the house is challenging. Our last question comes from Daphne, who asked, My question for you is, do you have any favourite jokes? <laughs> now, it's kind of really difficult to tell a joke by yourself, <laughs> so I'm just going to invite Vogel in so you can see how this joke would actually go. So, uh, one of my subscribers asked me to what my favourite joke was. Okay. It's kind of awkward to tell a joke by yourself, so okay. that's why you're here. <laughs> right, okay. Alrighty, okay, so, why did the chicken cross the road? Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the cutie patootie's house. <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? It's the chicken! <laughs> <laughs> get it? Yeah. Because you're a cutie patootie. Yep, it was not lost on me. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. You're welcome. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> you can also slightly tweak that joke to make it uh, less friendly. But those two together would have to be my favourite. Thank you to everybody who asked a question on last week's video, and if anybody has a question they want me to answer next week, please do leave that in the comments below.
there we go. So as you can see, I just have a double page spread just dedicated to a long running task list, but then I have columns on each side so I can indicate when I intended to do the task and when it actually got done. I really appreciate the flexibility of a layout like this one. Without the decoration at the top, it is ridiculously simple and it means you don't actually end up with any blank space at the end of the week, provided your task list goes across both pages. Thank you for watching though team, if you liked today's video please do make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and if you wanted to see more from me, feel free to go check out one of my other videos. Until next time, bye!